So hello everyone in the community. This is Svea Becker speaking. I'm your host for today's SAP community call on the topic, the evolution of UI5. And before we start, I want to briefly inform you about um, the chat functions here within Zoom and other functions as well. So all attendees are uh, muted and um, you have the possibility to speak up via chat. So when you hover to the bottom of your of the presentation uh, line, you can see that there is the um, chat window. When you click on that, it will open on the right hand side. And there you can chat with the attendees here and ask questions also. Then you can, um, then we have also some time for question and answer at the end. And there you can unmute yourself. And I will explain this also later before we start with the Q&A section. So you can unmute yourself while hover, hovering through your name and then um, click unmute. So we are going to start our community call today. So um, here with me is Oliver Greif. Oliver is the product manager at SAP and he's responsible for UI5 technologies and specified on SAP UI5. So Oliver, welcome. Thank you, Svea. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, welcome to this uh, call. Um, this is the first time we from the UI5 area are doing a community call. So we are quite overwhelmed by the large uh, amount of uh, participants. So this uh, shows great interest into the topic of SAP UI5. This is great. Um, so this is the first community call we are doing. It's an introduction. It's about the evolution of UI5. In case you want to know more, if you want to go deeper, have more requests, would like to uh, hear and see another community call on more detailed topics, please let us know. Um, please put your ideas in the uh, chat window. Let us know just uh, wishing a community call on topic X, Y, Z, any UI5 related topic, uh, be it uh, tools or Fiori related or open source. Um, please let us know in the chat and then we can see whether we can organize a follow-up uh, call uh, together with Svea. Okay, now off we go. Um, let me see. Okay, so this is uh, important. And this is my rough agenda for today. So first I want to give a very brief overview about what is SAP UI5 uh, and uh, Open UI5. Then I would like to go a bit deeper into a couple of uh, uh, innovations we have in SAP and the major investment uh, areas we have. Uh, one of this will be obviously the Fiori design evolution, Fiori 3 for example. Second one is UI5 flexibility. So our uh, better technology to extend, to adapt uh, Fiori or UI5 applications. Third one is the UI5 evolution. I'm going to uh, explain uh, what this is. And uh, also the UI5 web components and what the idea behind that is. And then at the end, I want to uh, um, explain and show how we in the UI5 area collaborate with you, which kind of channels and events we have uh, to work with the UI5 community. Okay, so let's go ahead. First thing is a very brief product overview of UI5. Um, UI5 is an HTML5 framework. It's the UI technology web UI technology of SAP to implement, uh, for example, Fiori applications, but also other applications which are not following the Fiori design, but which want to make use of all the uh, capabilities of UI5 for a web application. Um, we have support for what we call an SAP product standard. So all the things you would expect from an SAP technology, uh, be it uh, security, accessibility, and all these things you would expect from an enterprise grade uh, software product. We also support uh, efficient development tools. Uh, most prominently, this is SAP Web IDE to develop with SAP Fiori, but there's also a number of other tools and toolings we provide in the UI5 area. Um, 
we enable um, generic adaptation as this slide says here. So we have an uh, um, improved uh, technology to adapt screens, for example, standard screens you have from SAP applications and you want to adapt them to your use cases or screens you have developed with uh, Fury Elements and also want to adapt them. So I'll uh, explain this in a, in a minute. Uh, easy integration into SAP single point of entry, which is of course the Fiori launchpad. Uh, and last but not least, uh, SAP UI5 is the UI technology, or I should say the reference UI technology uh, to implement the Fiori user experience in the web and the respective evolutions of the Fiori user experience. So this is a slide I mean, UI5 is in the center of everything, very big, and every all the other important SAP uh, products are around SAP UI5. You see the tools at the at the top. I mentioned a couple of them. Uh, we have, for example, also the UI theme designer to change the uh, theming and branding of an application. And on the top right, you see uh, toolings we provide in the UI5 area too. Uh, have a more efficient uh, development or uh, troubleshooting process. You see some of the products uh, in SAP who uh, consume UI5 and there's actually more than, than these. You see the uh, different distributions we have and platforms which are supported with UI5. So the idea is that with UI5 you develop the application once and by running in the browser we can make sure that uh, you can use the applications on all those different uh, technology stacks and platforms and browsers. At the bottom you see in the knowledge section uh, where you can learn about SAP UI5, most prominently the SAP UI5 demo kit, which is the central interactive documentation for UI5 with lots of tutorials, uh, samples and demos. Of course, there's SAP uh, classroom trainings. We have an open SAP course, and I'll mention that also on a later slide. And uh, here are a couple of links to communities, and I'm also going into more details later. So we should understand SAP UI5 is in the center of many important products of SAP. Just one slide to highlight the uh, UI5 release and maintenance strategy. There was a change um, roughly uh, half a year or a bit more than half a year ago where we switched to monthly releases. So from our stakeholders within SAP and outside, we got the request to be able to consume UI5 features, new features um, more uh, quickly. So we uh, changed the release schedule to monthly releases. So at the top row, you can see the uh, year and month monthly releases. You can see here the release number goes up by uh, one. So you see 1.60, uh, 61, 62, 63, and so on. All these releases are supported for productive usage. Um, just like before, we have dedicated releases, which we now call long-term maintenance releases, those highlighted with the orange uh, box here. Uh, we changed the terminology to, to fit to how these things are called outside SAP. So those releases are dedicated releases which receive no new features, but rather patches only. For example, the 1.60 release will have patches .1, .2, .3, and so on. So this is the scheme you would either use the monthly releases to get uh, fresh new features of UI5 or you would use the long-term maintenance uh, versions uh, to, um, for example, in a productive environment to uh, get patches only. Okay, so that was a super quick uh, overview. So let's now have a look into the main innovations and directions where UI5 is going. These are the four areas. The first one is SAP Fiori. Um, this is a design evolution. So there's also uh, news in the Fiori design and SAP UI5 is uh, bringing this as the UI technology. 
Second one is UI flexibility. So how can we at SAP, you as a partner or customer, adapt screens we uh, we have or, or you, you have created in an efficient way. Third one is talking about a new trends in web technology because with UI5, we don't want to stick to completely proprietary technologies in SAP, but want to like uh, leverage what's happening in uh, web development also outside SAP. And I'm going to mention the UI5 web components as well. So let's go into those four topics. First one is the Fiori design evolution. You can see here two screenshots. The left one is Fiori 2.0. So this is the uh, the current or the, which we had until very recently, the Fiori design, Fiori 2.0. And the right screenshot is showing the Fiori 3 release. For some reason, this is really called 3 and not 3.0. I'm not sure why, why this is. So one is 2.0 and the current one is Fiori 3. And of course, with UI5 being the reference uh, implementation for Fiori running in the web, you get all these features uh, via UI5 out of the box. Um, let me show you some aspects. One important aspect in Fiori 3, amongst uh, a number of other aspects, is UX consistency. So if we look at SAP products like S4HANA, we have a single stack of technology and we have uh, um, a consistency, UX consistency um, um, is, is easier to, to achieve. If we look uh, across S4HANA, for example, if your business process covers a couple of systems, S4HANA and um, success factors and Ariba, for example, so your user will touch several systems and then the UX consistency might not that easy to, to reach. So you might even have different UI technologies. So SAP Fiori 3 is targeting a consistent user experience across the all SAP solutions by introducing the respective elements you can see here on the right. So a common um, shell header bar, this dark bar you see at the top uh, to um, uh, to uh, navigate between the different solutions and applications. And you see also additional screen elements. You're much more flexible with designing the different uh, pages of the Fiori Launchpad, uh, including cards you can see here. So there's uh, lots of new stuff in the Fiori design evolution and of course implemented in UI5. How does this translate into technology? At the top, you can see the five Fiori design principles. So they are unchanged since we started with UI5. Um, uh, for example, the Fiori applications are role-based, not super complex applications with all functionality, but really role-based tailored to a dedicated user. And we have the other um, like principles of Fiori you might already know. How do you implement this Fiori design system? You have different technologies. Here we are talking about SAP UI5 or Open UI5. But in case you're targeting a dedicated mobile user experience, super fast, maybe with offline capabilities, native mobile technologies like iOS or Android might be an, an option. I edit here the main links to learn about First, the Fiori design principle, and second, uh, again, the UI5 demo kit with the information on how to implement this. I added um, slides here from the UI5 roadmap. <clears throat> so we have a dedicated uh, roadmap slide deck uh, for UI5 with lots of details. I just picked here one slide for the rendering section where you can see uh, how UI5 um, implemented the Fiori 3 design uh, that we uh, implement also cards. Um, maybe I can just show you where you can find this information. So if you open the 
UI5 demo kit. It's ui5.sap.com. You have the tools section here. And I think it's at the bottom of the tools section, you have the cards explorer. So this explains what cards are. So cards are a bit like the tiles on the Fiori Launchpad, but much more flexible. So they're flexible in size, for example, and they're also flexible in content. So a card can uh, display content of various uh, applications or solutions. So there's some explanation here. And there's also a card explorer to actually see uh, and understand the different card types. As you can see here, there's a list card, there's an analytical card, and there's much more. And you can also explore the individual cards. So there's an explore section here. And once this comes up, you can see the card on the left and you can see on the, uh, on the right, you can see the, um, the coding for the card and uh, change change this and right away see the effect on the left side so it's very flexible the card and it has also an an interface you can see on the right which is uh, uh very like lean and flexible and can be used uh also on different ui technologies so uh this is also an uh, a means to achieve UX consistency uh, with cards being part of the different pages of a Fiori Launchpad. So let's go back to my presentation. Okay, that was the first topic. Second one is UI5 flexibility. This is a slide just to, to motivate this topic. If you have worked with UI5 applications, uh, you you have probably seen the model view controller concept and you might know that each of those elements, the views, the controllers, or even the data model and gateway can be extended. So imagine a standard application from SAP and you as a partner or customer want to add your custom logic or custom fields to that. So we offer extension points. So predefined extension points, um, it's like what we had in ABAP with the bodies, we also have here in UI5. So an application developer at SAP needs to come up with uh, some extension points, so pre predefined points, and then you can implement your logic with that. So for this, we often got the feedback that <clears throat> these extension points are not sufficient. They're not enough extension points or they are not uh, consistent or not in the right place. So we were actually looking for a better technology to do these extensions. And SAP UI5 flexibility is this technology. So the idea is that uh, we provide a mechanism to do lifecycle stable uh, extensions. So even if there's a new version of the application, you want your custom extension still to run properly with modification-free UI changes. And for this, we want to provide intuitive tooling with which you can do in an efficient way your changes. <clears throat> and who can do those changes? One thing is, one, uh, or one user role is the developer, of course. The developer is doing those changes in SAP Web IDE. But there's also, other roles, as you can see here, with SAP UI5 flexibility, also the end user can do some changes. So imagine you want to change the UI of the Fiori application, you want to move a column to the front, you want to hide a field, then given that you have the respective authorization, you can do this also as an end user or as a key user. Imagine a key user is a person with some technical understanding, uh, like a person who's uh, creating Excel macros, for example, and the key user wants to do some UI changes for his or her team, for example. So if the key user has the respective authorization, he or she can do such changes and release them to a team of end users. 
just to imagine how this translates into different systems. A developer would obviously work on a development system. This could be an, a NetWeaver system, could also be a development uh, sub-account on cloud platform. The key user would work on test systems or test uh, sub-account and the end user obviously in the productive system. Those changes in UI5 uh, flexibility are um, stored in the respective uh, stack and platform in different layers. I mentioned changes doing done by developers, done by key users or done by end users. Uh, so um, once the uh, application is, is launched, all those changes are added up and the end user sees the final uh, UI. The, the important thing is here that these changes are stored separately from the coding of the application. With this, we can make sure that uh, we have a, like uh, we're um, life cycle stable and independent of the uh, up, updates of the respective application, we can make sure that the uh, custom extensions still work fine. And actually there's two scenarios for UI5 flexibility. The scenario I was talking uh, about until now is this classical extensibility scenarios. SAP has a standard application and you want to change this and extend this. But there's also another scenario which is related to Fiori elements. If you're developing your own applications based on Fiori elements, so you're using predefined patterns from Fiori elements because you want to follow the Fiori design patterns, <clears throat> then it's of course good to do this. But you can also use UI5 flexibility to adapt your application because you might want to, in principle, follow the Fiori design patterns of Fiori elements, but still have some uh, specialities. You want to change a couple of fields, you want to hide a couple of fields, want to rename fields and so on. So this technology is for extending standard applications, but also for developing your own applications with Fiori elements, for example, and then making them fit to your use case. And as I highlighted here, it's a generic framework feature. So this feature does not rely on application developers to have put in some extension points. It just works because it's a feature of UI5. So it's not required that there are extension points in the respective application. This is one of the major advantages. And to implement this, we have two types of projects uh, in SAP Web IDE. The extension project on the right is what we have for quite some years now with the classic extension uh, points and the left one with the name of adaptation project is the one leveraging UI5 flexibility. And the respective roadmap slide where you can see that we also introduce support of freestyle applications and the respective functionalities, for example, on Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry environment, and not only on NetWeaver stacks. Um, next uh, topic is UI5 evolution. UI5 evolution is the innovation project of UI5. So it's not a new release. There's no migration or anything. It's a project within SAP. And this started when we were looking at performance. We were trying to improve performance on mobile devices. And we are trying to do this uh, by modularizing the UI5 framework and introducing asynchronous call to make things faster. With this, we also moved closer to web standards. I mentioned at the beginning that we want to include modern things which are happening outside SAP in web development. But on the same side, we need to safeguard your investments and also our investments, of course, into applications uh, to, uh, by ensuring compatibility with uh, what we currently have. So this is the general idea. And let's look at a very simple example. At the bottom, you can see the UI5 framework. 
it supports a number of programming models, for example, um, with using a data model with OData. It supports different um, view um, technologies, for example, XML or JavaScript. There's a number of UI controls, as you probably know, and different features in the core. So imagine you have an application like the yellow one at the top featuring a date picker and a button. Then to launch this app, why loading lots of UI controls and lots of features of the UI framework, which are actually not used? This is what we want to avoid. So we broke down the whole UI5 framework in different modules and also enabled communication within UI5 in an asynchronous way. So this is one aspect, but just by breaking it down, it's not faster. So how can we make it faster? This is a typical application. You can see a, a sample application coding in yellow. You can see the UI5 core in green and a library of UI5 control in blue. This has a certain size and to load it, for example, on a mobile device, it takes a certain time. But if we use the UI5 evolution build, we can make this actually smaller because we're loading only those parts of the core which are actually needed and only those controls which are actually needed. So the result is smaller and with that it's faster. To do this, we provide um, tooling open source Node.js based tooling, UI5 evolution uh, tooling. Um, these are different modules which can also be integrated in other tools, for example, in grunt task runner tools. This can be controlled with the command line interface or it's also integrated into SAP Web IDE. And uh, it's not only those build toolings, but uh, until I think two or three months, uh, we now also have migration tooling. Uh, so this is tooling which helps you uh, with your current UI5 app to make it, make the coding more modern and make the coding uh, to be aligned more to the principles we have uh, introduced with UI5 evolution. And the respective roadmap, where you can see the different aspects, the modular core, as we call it, and asynchronous APIs, APIs and what is coming uh, with regards to improvements in the core and for UI5 evolution. Okay, next topic is the UI5 web components. So what is a web component? This is not an SAP specific thing. This is a standard outside SAP, or it's basically a set of standards. And it's basically to define an HTML tag. The HTML tag is something which brings up a visual element on the browser. And with web components, we can define our own tags. So obviously defining our own tags with the respective UI5 capabilities, the UI5 elements. So why do we do this? One aspect is we want to share UI5 qualities with different solutions. Remember at the beginning, I was explaining the UX consistency and we want to bring Fiori to all the different solutions. And this is one aspect here, it's consistency. We want to make it easy to consume UI5 elements. So it's not required yet that you have the full um, Fiori stack with all the different technology components, but that's really easy to consume this with a small footprint, not with the full uh, technology stacks. And this is targeting web developers who are using, uh, like who need their flexibility to use HTML tags instead of the full uh, SAP stack we have for Fiori. So we think this is very modern. We think this is enterprise great because uh, with this, we still have the enterprise qualities we have with UI5 and it is framework agnostic. Looking at the UI5 uh, web components, they uh, come with HTML and CSS, which is needed to bring up the visual things in the browser. And they also 
um, have some uh, JavaScript because there's also some behavior which, uh, which uh, are part of a web component. Let's have a look at the web component page here. So this is the page. You can see some explanation here. And an example, this one here is a date picker. So you can see this is properly uh, styled and looking good. And it also has some behavior. So we can, for example, select the uh, year. We can page here through the month. And this behavior is something you would not want to implement on your own, but you want to get it for free from your web component. If you're interested here, uh, you can have a look, uh, look at uh, how to start your coding. So there's a code sandbox. And there's also a playground here where you can see the list of UI5 web components we have and details how to install this and how to use the different web components. So we not only have simple web components like buttons, but also more complex ones like a table, for example. Okay, and I mentioned uh, framework agnostic. So imagine you have a product, SAP solution or non-SAP solution, which is using some different programming models or UI technologies as React, Angular, or Vue, for example. And how can those leverage the UI5 capabilities? This is exactly the UI5 web components. All those frameworks use HTML and very easily they can leverage the UI5 web components as with that we get all the UI5 capabilities, the Fiori design, the accessibility, security, and everything. One important thing is that the UI5 web components are not a successor of SAP UI5. So we will still have SAP UI5 for the SAP stacks, but they are complementary. So for other solutions which are not on a classical SAP stack. And again, in case you want to uh, uh, see some more details, the respective roadmap slide where you can see what we have planned in the web component area. Okay, so um, at the end, I want to uh, explain a bit uh, about how we collaborate with the community. So one thing is that, of course, we have uh, the developer community page uh, in, uh, in sap.com area. So we have uh, here an entry page explaining the different features, featuring tutorials and resources. And this is a good uh, entry point, but we have more. Let me go back to my slide here. Uh, if we open the uh, open UI5, so the open source version of SAP UI5 page, here we go. Uh, so we can see not only information on open UI5, but there's also a link here for community. And here we can see uh, for asking questions or discussing uh, UI5 features. We have Slack, for example, uh, um, as, as, a, as a, a platform uh, to, discuss, uh, to, to have discussions and, and launch questions. And this is a, a quite lively uh, a place where uh, there, there's lots of um, uh, questions and collaboration between SAP developers and uh, non-SAP developers. We have also Stack Overflow and we have the SAP community with the respective uh, uh, questions and answers and everything you know from the SAP community. What else do we have? We have the UI Fivers bus. Let me just open this. So this is a, a brand where we have, uh, uh, where we publish blogs with uh, technical information. So you can just get an impression here. So there's uh, blogs on the UI5 migration tool I mentioned earlier on how to get started with the UI5 uh, web components and lots of other stuff. So this is definitely a place you should uh, uh, check out. Uh, we also have the UI5 official tag 
Uh, so this is um, a bit like the blogs, but we want to make it official, meaning that this is coming from the UI5 team uh, within SAP. We have uh, a Twitter account for Open UI5. Let me see if I can open this. So if you want to follow UI5, open UI5 topics, this is also a good uh, source of information. Whoops. Where's my page? Here I am. Uh, we have a uh, YouTube. Let me open the YouTube. So if you're more a, a video person, uh, have a look at the YouTube channel for Open UI5. And one aspect you can see here is the, let me stop this, is the uh, playlist for UI5Con. I'll explain a bit more about UI5Con, but uh, if you want to, watch the, uh, uh, the content of UI5Con, the recordings of uh, sessions, or even once there's a UI5Con UI5 live, the uh, streaming, then this is the place uh, to, where you can see this. Uh, what else is there, YouTube? The UI5 newscast. So we have a podcast uh, series. Uh, this is mostly in German, uh, but there's already uh, a couple of uh, podcasts, newscasts here, and uh, I guess this is also worth uh, checking out. And we have some events here, for example, the community call which in which we are right now, and more events, for example, UI5Con events. So this is a page to check out. And... Where is my slide? I have lost my slide. Here it is. Um, I added also a link to the UI5 lab. So this is a place for you, a community driven place, a repository, uh, if you're into developing UI5 custom control libraries. Please check this out. And I mentioned earlier the open SAP platform, the free online courses we have. And there's also a course which was live, I think, in May this year uh, on UI5. Uh, the course is not live, but you can access all the course materials, the videos, exercises, everything is there. And we received uh, a lot of very positive feedback on this course. So in case you're up to learning UI5, then this is a valuable resource for you. And I mentioned this earlier, we have UI5Con, so the UI5 community. So this started a while ago in 2016. I think it started with a discussion in Slack. And there was the first UI5 conference in Frankfurt in 2016. So, and that was really successful. Everyone was uh, really um, enthusiastic about that. And uh, since then, we had a number of UI5Con. You can see here the uh, list on the, on the right. It's by now a well-established uh, conference we have in this area where we are bringing together developers from SAP, developers of the UI5 framework, for example, with you, with the UI5 community also outside SAP. And we decided to do this also uh, here close to uh, Waldorf, our headquarters in Germany. So we, are, we did this in Roth, which is just a couple of kilometers from Waldorf, um, because with this we can like strengthen the, uh, the exchange between the SAP developers, the UI developers of the UI5 framework and, and you. Um, so there's one big event we have uh, each year and a couple of smaller events, for example, in Frankfurt, in Netherlands, in Bangalore. And you can see there's an upcoming event in February in Brussels, in Belgium. So in case uh, uh, you're interested to join this, uh, please check out this uh, webpage. And there's also a Twitter account, UI5Con, uh, where you get all the latest information. 
in case you're interested to host your own UI5Con, this is possible. We from SAP, we would support this with the infrastructure, with some infrastructure and for example, sending a few speakers. Uh, the main organization would then be done by local people. So this is a kind of a collaboration. So in case you're interested, please uh, check with us and let us know. Um, just be aware that once we announce a new UI5Con, the interest is really high. There's lots of people who buy tickets. So you have to be very fast uh, when you want to join one of these conferences. Okay, this is my summary. So UI5 is evolving. UI5 remains the best UI technology for building business applications. We are embracing latest technologies, things which happen, uh, which are available for web development also outside SAP. Of course, we are implementing the latest design guidelines, for example, Fiori 3 and all the features which are coming with Fiori 3. We're providing uh, technologies to extend, adapt applications or your, your own applications or SAP applications. And we continue to support your development with UI5, for example, in SAP Web RDE, but also with other toolings like the UI5 build tooling or the uh, UI5 migration tooling I mentioned earlier. And we are very proud of the strong community and growing community we have for UI5. And uh, as I explained, SAP is very happy about this and also investing a lot into this. That's it, thank you very much. Um, so I would give it back to Svea. Yes, thanks Oliver, very great presentation. Um, I think also the audience uh, was very interested in those topics because there was a lot of going on in the chat. Um, and you have now the possibility to um, speak up. So you can raise your hand when you hover over your name and you have the possibility to raise your hand and then I can um, help you to unmute yourself or you can write now the chats um, the questions in the chat window and um, another possibility would be when you hover to the to the black menu at the bottom there's a Q&A possibility also here is the possibility to write the question directly in this functionality so we give the audience some time in the meanwhile I'll um, bring up a poll. So I hope you can see it all. So um, we have already some topics which you're interested in, which you wrote in the chat. So when you can vote here, you can also directly um, send your suggestion or write your suggestion in the chat window so that uh, the team can take it up. And as I already mentioned in the beginning or also during the presentation, um, there is the possibility to follow up with everything. We will provide the recording and as well the presentation um, to our community page. And if you have any general question for the community, you can also reach us via community at sap.com. And as far as I can see, there is no more question. There's one question in the Q&A area. Are there any extensions for VS Code Plant? So uh, this is a question towards SAP Web IDE. So currently we have SAP Web IDE with uh, lots of uh, um, capabilities to develop with UI5, obviously. Uh, we are currently in a phase where we have uh, the better of the uh, next generation of SAP Web IDE, the name of that thing is SAP Business Application Studio. So it's the like the successor of SAP Web IDE, which is uh, VS Code uh, um, based. Um, and this will be uh, uh, an IDE on its own, but uh, selected uh, extensions or plugins are also planned to have dedicately uh, for, 
for a VS Code, for a separate VS Code environment. So watch out for the SAP Business Application Studio. Still have to make sure that I uh, say this right because I'm not used to it yet. <laughs> okay, there is another question um, appears in the chat as well now in the question and answer section. How to link S000 trial sub account of SAP Cloud Platform Workflow to SAP R3? Um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> this is a bit uh, of a, uh, a very different area. This is not my area of expertise. Sorry, I just have to be honest. I don't know. No problem. We have another one. Uh, does it mean Webite will be deprecated? Um, eventually, probably yes, but this is a long, long time. So we have Web IDE. We have now the first version of the Business Application Studio and the first uh, GA version coming early next year will target developing a full stack application on cloud with only some Fiori UI capabilities. During next year, there will be more Fiori UI capabilities. And eventually when we have all of this in the new product, I would assume there's some kind of, I don't know if you call it migration or some move from what you currently have in Web IDE into the new product. Uh, but this will take a lot of time. So eventually, yes. But uh, if you're developing with UI5 or Web IDE, please do this in SAP Web IDE right now. And eventually you will be moved to the new one. So don't wait for uh, the new uh, product until this gets all the UI capabilities. This will take uh, some more time, well into next year. All right. There are some um, conversations going on in the chat as well. So better platform for UI5 other than web ID right now? Question mark. Uh, uh, depends on how much support you expect from your IDE. I mean, technically you can develop UI5 in any IDE or even in your notepad editor. Um, if you really want to have lots of features which are related to UI5 like code completion or related to Fiori or VisiVic drag and drop editors for uh, screens and so on, then this would be SAP Web ID. All right, um, there is another answer about um, the topics and the sources, resources we have. So uh, you already suggested the links you send them and um, those, um, this is the, the answer for Mehmet. Those will be provided in the presentation as well. Um, the recording will be provided on our community page about the community calls. You can find this, this uh, when you hover in the main menu over resources and there you can find the community calls and um, give us some time to upload the recording and the presentation. But there are all links provided about open, so open source courses, blog posts, and so on. And um, I guess there will also be a lot of information in the SAP community when you follow the tag UI5, right? Yes, of course. All right. Margot is also very busy with answering all the questions. I think we are done so far. If not, please raise your hand. I unmute you and you can speak up. Seems to be on track, everything. And again, if you like uh, to see follow up community calls, please let us know. Please let us know in the chat which topic you're interested in, which UI5 related topic you're interested in, or you see my email address. And sorry for my voice, I have a little cold. I'm happy that I could talk for an hour. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, no problem. You really uh, did it well, so I understood everything. <laughs> All good. good. And um, I'm really sure you have also an SAP community profile, so you can also 
uh, yes, and so you can also follow um, Oliver on the oh. SAB community and he can yeah. follow you back and then you have also possibility to exchange direct messages in the SAP community. Um, here is a topic suggestion, I think. You can take it up in the chat. And if there are no more questions, I can only say a big thank you to Oliver and his team. It was a great pleasure to have you here. We had a wonderful session with a lot of um, interest in a lot of participants. Um, so I hope to get more subcommittee calls with you guys. Yes. So watch out in the pages. Be happy to do this. Yeah. So thanks very much, everyone. I will stop the recording now and um,